This tutorial shows you how to work with subreports in Jaspersoft's iReport Designer. A subreport is a section of a report that can be bound to a different query, and it's related to the parent report by parameters. A subreport can in turn have its own subreports, and this nesting can occur indefinitely. In this example, there's an employee's report, and the employee's report is based on a query of companies, Huxley Industry Inc., Swan Construction Company, and it uses a subreport to display the employee values, David King, Sybil Bedford, etc. Now that subreport in turn uses another subreport to retrieve the status code, exempt or non-exempt, based on the another table. Going over the data model quickly, there's a company table, and the company owns employees, and each employee has an employee status. So the way that the report and subreports are going to be set up is that there will be a report for company. Embedded in that report will be a query run against the employee table. And there will also be a small lookup that's run as part of the employee display that's based on employee status. So three tables, three reports, or more accurately, one report and two subreports. To start the report, I'm going to base this on a query, and the query is pulling in the list of companies from the company table. I also have some extra companies that I don't want to display because they don't have anything in the employees, so that's why I'm using this WHERE clause here. To create a subreport, you drag the subreport onto the detail area. I'm going to create a new report. And so that I can use the wizard, I'm going to use a query, uh, but I'm going to strike off the parameter for now. Eventually this will be parameterized, but I don't have the parameter defined yet. So I want to make sure that I'm able to get everything that I need out of it. And I'm going to call this one um, Employee Subreport. And it'll use the same connection. So for this one, I'm going to clear off some of the bands. In fact, all of the bands except for detail. And in the case of detail, I'm going to add some fields, but first I want to put in my parameter. Company ideas of type string. And I'm also going to put in a default value expression of 1. Um, this is so that I can test the report. So now that I've got this parameter defined, there happens to be a company ID 1 in my database. So this is sort of a practical step because what I want to do now is I want to restrict it by the um, parameter value, company ID. Let's drag that on there it equal read the fields okay now I'm ready to work with that now I can go into fields and I can take the data that I want uh, first name last name and email and we're going to briefly arrange this into a single record view I'm also going to add in a placeholder for employee status, which I'll be working with later. So I have four fields here. I'll, I'll tighten this up a little. I want some space to occur between the blocks of records that are here. And now in this simple subreport, I can preview it. And you can see that I've got the employees listed out. Now this is only for that company number one. Uh, there's another company involved, and you didn't see the records for that. 
That's because the parameter doesn't have a value yet. It doesn't have a linkage to the calling report. Uh, going back to the parent report, so I've got that over here. I'm going to indent it slightly like this. I'm going to bring up some of the spacing. And now, in order to link the two parameters together, we use this parameters value here. And I'm going to add in a subreport parameter name. This has to match the one, the parameter that I defined in the subreport. And for a value expression, I'm taking the field. So this is tying the field to a parameter in the subreport. And everything looks formatted. I want to preview this. You can see that I've got more than I had in that first evaluation of the subreport. I'm going to also add in, to provide a little context here, I'm going to add in the, the field that gives the company name. So the company name can go right here. And so that's how you evaluate this with a subreport. Um, you can also build a bigger query from this. Um, you can define a query that joins the company table to the employee table. And in that case, you'll have a repeating group. And you can use some of our reports um, group by functions in order to do this. Um, why you might prefer this technique, uh, if there are two data sources involved, that join might not be feasible. Or it may be easier for you to visualize two independent queries if they get to be rather, rather large. Uh, it may be easier to divide and conquer. Uh, a third reason would be reuse. You may want to reuse this employee block outside of the company in which case you've got a small sub-report that can be used throughout your reporting application. So we can see this applied again. I'm going to define within this employee sub-report another sub-report. And this is a simple way to dig out some lists of values. So for example, using the same technique that I used before, I'm going to my workbench to pull in the query. This might be something you do where you want to, want to look up value to come in. And this could be based on some other data source other than the one we're working with right now. So I'm taking an identifier. Oh, I don't need to group that. I'm taking it in an identifier, and I want to um, look up uh, uh, something more more readable. And I'll call this one uh, employee status sub report two. And it'll use the same connection. Okay. Now in this one, I'm going to remove all of the bands except for detail and this will be typical for your subreport settings that you don't necessarily need a lot of formatting if you're using it just as a way of dividing and conquering your, your report up and the query that I base this on here we read the fields in and I'm going to display only a single field it's going to be employee status description I don't need the label And I'm double checking in my palette here some of the settings. Looks like that's 20, and my overall band height is 21. I'll change that to 20 manually. This is so that it can appear in line with the other elements. And I'm going to use the same kind of uh, algorithm I've used before. I define in parameters a parameter, and we'll call this one uh, employee status ID. And I'll give it a default value of 1. This is, again, just so that we can test it. And so when I preview it, um, I'm going to not use this as a prompt. And so when I preview it, you can see I've got exempt and non-exempt uh, over here. And that is because I didn't parameterize my query yet. So. So now you'll see just the single record show up here. And there it is. Now I'm going to integrate this into my other report over here. So again, we've got a sub-report that's part of a sub-report itself. And I'll do the same type of linkage. I go down to the properties, go to the palette. Remember to add using the same name as you defined in the sub-report, and then in the value, 
I'm going to map that to a field. So now when I run my report, you can see I've got the values here. So the master report, of course, it's pulling in everything. Um, one thing I noticed that you have to watch for is we have to make sure that everything is getting uh, compiled. So sometimes I have to hit this button over here. And with the sub employees report too, I've noticed sometimes I have to refresh uh, as well. You can see the values uh, pop up there for me. So in a, following a divide and conquer approach, I have taken three queries, mapped them to three reports, and I'm able to develop a set of report components that can be brought into other contexts. Uh, this might be a good strategy for lookup values. Maybe those lookup values come from data sources other than a relational database. And maybe you want to use things like this employee block here in other reports. Well, all that's pretty easily accomplished with subreport. Remember, when you're linking your reports together, keep the parameter names consistent so that they'll always match up.